What's up everybody, Bo Hyman. Back with another video. This time, happy Saturday, by the way, to everybody. Uh, this time I'm looking at another um, HG model kit. This is from Bandai, if you're not familiar. This is one of the 12 uh, toy lines that I have basically really, over the years, especially over the last year, has started to collect. It's uh, one and one forty-four scale, essentially, usually. Um, um, HG model kits from Bandai, if you're not sure what the hell that is, just, um, you know what, if you're interested, uh, Google HG Bandai or 1144 scale. Um, this scale is 160th, different line, but still, it's a, it's about the same size. I'll, I'll show you, I'll do a size comparison in a minute. But if you're interested in this kind of thing, Google the 1 and 144 scale HG model kit for Bandai and just pick out something that looks cool. Try and make it more modern kit so you get the, the best benefit of uh, some of the modern technology. But other than that, this is just a um, different line from Full Metal Panic, which is another kind of uh, giant battle mech uh, show, I guess. I checked out some videos on YouTube. Um, looks pretty cool. I'm not familiar with it at all, but it still looks pretty cool. This is, I guess, the main suit. I was reading a little bit about it. Um, it was destroyed and then created or something, blah, blah, blah. It has some additional parts, which I'll show in a little bit. Um, but it, it, assembling this was a, was a lot of fun, um, in the same way that a lot of the best HG or, um, you know, similar kits are, whereas you're just kind of messing with it as you build it and you realize that it has all these neat little gimmicks, um, that allow it to pose and to move and to just kind of be a neat, it's just really neat what they're doing with mod, I just think they're neat, um, what they're doing with uh, modern engineering, toy engineering, stuff like that. And this is a plastic model kit, so it's not technically a toy, um, but you, I definitely still classify them as toys because they are inexpensive. If you had a kid or if yourself wanted to uh, play with toys, I guess, but if you had a kid and you got these for, you know, got one of these for your kid, they, the, the building of it and the posing of it and messing around with it and all that stuff is part of the play, you know, I, I guess, uh, attraction there. Um, but they, they're not as sturdy as like a typical toy. They're not going to take as much abuse. They do eventually loosen up quite a bit. Um, their joints like that, even there right there, is loosening up a bit just as I've built it and played with it. But they're just so fun to mess with. You're just sitting there playing with them and, and you know, yoinking around and, 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 you know, changing some of the stuff, adding parts, whatever. And this one, of course, is no exception. Um, as with a lot of HG kits now, especially, the way they build them to be so poseable. This is just incredibly poseable. Go check out some of the animation. It's really cool. It's a pretty cool suit. Now, the one that I saw earlier was animated by a uh, computer. It looked like computer animation, not hand-drawn animation, which a lot of a lot of these shows are doing now. Um, they're using a computer to do the bot parts and everything, and then maybe they hand animate the, the, the people or whatever, which is fine. It's, it's, you know, combination or whatever. So I enjoyed the, the as I was building this little, little, little touches that really really helped out for example this orange part right here um, as you cut it off of the runner if you cut a part off a runner, and I'll show you real quick in case you don't know FYI um, if you're new to this so this is a runner this is a, a, a sprue some people call them whatever you call them and when you cut off a part so you're gonna want to cut a little bit away from the runner like right about there and then you take a razor and you cut down the little nub a little bit slower a little more carefully and you don't leave a big mark on the plastic where it connected to the runner um, so one of the problems with some plastics like this orange or maybe a black a blue a dark blue is really bad about it will uh, result in you having a, a you know a piece that looks pretty you can see the gouge and you might see a few of these as I rotate it around because I'm not being ultra careful especially with my straight bit built kits what I'm doing a lot of times is just building it sticking it on the shelf because one day I'm gonna paint it or just it's just to get it done for a review or just kind of have fun building it. So I'm not being super careful. Um, but, so I would cut out a part and I'd be like, oh darn, you know, that's got a little, but this one was really good. Not necessarily doing what they call undergating, which is where the, the sprue attaches to it below, not to the side of the, of the piece. So if you have this, the, the mold is pumped in, the, the stuff is pumped into the mold below, where it attaches, then you can trim that off and there's no no worry about it being viewed. So you don't have to be as careful. Really nice kits have a lot of undergating. This has almost none, right? But it also was designed though with a part like this that I definitely gouged on the side. Um, when I assembled it, it kind of sinks into this little uh, shaped area. So basically it would hide any real mistakes. 
Um, so it has all these little gimmicks like that and little um, extra parts, um, or I'm sorry, well-designed parts that are, are meant to kind of form up together. For example, that's not a sticker, that's an actual plastic part right there. Um, you've got this little line here, this little gray line is an actual little part that you cut apart and as you're cutting it apart, you're like, this is so tiny and it, it kind of got some, uh, some uh, gouge marks on it just because I was being quick. But you push it in and it actually recesses inside that gap. You see that how this is all recessed in there. So any damage you do to that part is, is hidden. And I don't know if it's just this line or how the suit is designed or whatever, but it's got a lot of these nice little inlaid type of parts, that orange there, that give it a, a, a really nice detailed look. The one thing I would like to see on something like this, now it's not meant to be uh, with this particular suit, I guess it's not designed that way. It did have a few stickers. Let me see if I have them somewhere. There they are. Grab the stickers here real quick. But they didn't have those kind of fancy stickers you saw with that uh, grunt suit I posted a few weeks ago. So these are just basic foil stickers. You see, I actually missed and forgot to put on some of them. But that's kind of a good sign because you can see how detailed it looks even without the stickers. Um, sure, you could do some panel lining and, and bring out some of the details here. Of, of course, you can always do that uh, on almost any suit. But let's see, let's take a look at the head and I'll show you. Let's see if this is a part. So if I take this off, it just kind of snaps on there. You see how that little gun kind of thing, whatever that is, just kind of rests inside there. Um, I believe that little part there, the little orange part, is a sticker though. But it looks like a little inlaid part, doesn't it? I think that's a sticker. Let's see, I can't remember, but either way, yeah, that might be a sticker, I can't, I can't remember. But you can see all the little details and there's a sticker on his eyes, I believe. And it's just got a ton of those. There's a sticker here on the hood, on the uh, mohawk thing. I cannot get this part. How do I get that back on there? So it's got all those nice little details that can be, uh, you know, appreciated as you build it, which is the best part about these model kits is as you're building them, you're enjoying uh, how it looks. My, one of my quibbles though is, you see how it attaches to the waist there? It's literally just a ball joint and the waist is just kind of hovering there. It's too, it's just way too thin. Maybe I'm missing a part there or something, but I seriously doubt I'm pretty good at building these. It's almost skeletal thin, and they've been doing that a lot with kits lately where it has these really, really thin waists, and then they, they pose them with their legs all like that, and you know, it's so exaggerated, it's a bit much. I wish that would have been, I wish it would have just had, now granted, that's the design of the suit, not the model kit people, um, but I wish it would have just been a little more solid because as you can see there, it looks a little bit weak. Um, but it gives it a lot of a, a lot of range. You know, you can turn it all the way around. It's just a it's just a ball joint, so really really easy to kind of mess with. Um, it does come with a few weapons. By the way, you can take that hair stuff off. You just pull it out there. It's kind of annoying. It has these weapons, which these are kind of cool. What you do with these is you actually pull out the sword part, and I guess this is part of the gimmick. You fold that up, and then these can be stored right there inside the. Uh, how do you do it? I can't remember. Like that something like that where he can basically grab them, pull them out, it's supposed to fold out I guess is the idea and the weapon, the sword, God this is so hard to do when I'm looking, <laughs> the sword part just pops out, I mean it doesn't even really pop out, you pop it out but still, so then it becomes this kind of sword, you get two of those, one for each kneecap I guess, um, personally I'm not really big into the weapons, a lot of these kits are just kind of goofy but not bad, it's got this cool looking gun that can do some crazy stuff, um, it can mount, it can, you know, it's just got a lot of neat little gimmicks and I'm not going to do all of them because it's a little bit much, um, but you can mount something on the shoulder, oh, you can mount something on the shoulder. So as you see, as I'm playing with the little parts are falling off and stuff, that's something you've got to be aware of Whoops. with these kits is that, you know, they're not, they're not a toy in that classic sense. Um, they don't stand up to a lot of play, um, but I mean, you get have so much fun out of them for 10 or 15 or $20 that they're really, really just, uh, they're, they're toy-like in that way. You still play with them in your own way, you know what I'm saying? Here is a it compared to a Granddaddy. So you can see that's a 1144 scale, um, 78 or whatever Granddaddy. Here it is compared to a can of Bush's Black Beans. It's a fantastic, fantastic kit. Uh, it's going to be one of those ones that um, I'd like to sit there and play with it, pose a lot, you know, put it in some crazy positions. Uh, maybe sitting down enjoying a nice cup of coffee and a donut. But this part here, the head, this thing, well, it, you're going to probably take that off immediately because if you have a shelf like I do um, and it's already getting packed, um, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. That that 
part needs to come off and you're gonna need to make some room for this guy. So I'll probably just pose him standing there like I like to do, and then occasionally I'll grab him off the shelf and mess with him, turn him around. See, I like it a lot better actually without that goofy thing on the back. Um, so it's kind of neat, not a lot, a lot of nice little gimmicks. If you're into this uh, anime, then you might really like the kit. I found it a really fun to build, really quick build, no big deal at all. Um, so that is the ARX-8 Full Metal Panics. I think it's the main suit, the La Levitine, Levitine, I can't remember what it's called. There it is doing some combat -y stuff. Great suit, go check out the anime, it's pretty fun. And I'll talk to you all later, bye-bye.